Okay, so let's take a look at some of the issues here. So the first one seems okay. Density is equal to mass over volume. Solve the problem for mass. So we get mass is equal to density times volume. That seems reasonable. For the next one, you are asked to rearrange the ideal gas law. PV is equal to nRT. When we solve for R, we get that R is equal to PV over N times T. So you divided by N, which is correct. Um, and then when you divide by T, you're dividing PV by T. You're not dividing the denominator again. So it's actually N multiplied by T. So this is not N divided by T. All right, after that one, so after that one, we have solve for x. So 25 is equal to 2 over x. So you would rearrange that formula. So you would multiply by x on this side, multiply by x on this side. That would give you 2x is equal to 25. So um, after we do that, we would end up with, or sorry, two, sorry, my mistake, two is equal to 25x. So then what we would do to solve for x is we would divide this by 25 and we would divide this by 25. So if we take two divided by 25, we end up with x being equal to 0 0.08, right? And you can check that if you take a calculator and if you take two divided by 0 0.08, you end up with 25. So this one would be, Incorrect. All right, let's move on to the next one. It says 36x is equal to 18. So here you would divide by 18. That's fine. So you would get 36 um, divided by, um, let's see here. So 36, so I would divide by 36, not divide by 18, because then you get, so you, this is incorrect. You get 2x is equal to 1. Okay, so if you were to divide this, like you say here, so you'd get, you, this cancels out, gives you a one. 36 divided by 18 gives you two. So that would give you two X is equal to one. So X is equal to one over two. Therefore, X is equal to a half, right? So this would be incorrect. So 36 times a half gives you 18. And you can check that in your calculator. If you take 36 multiplied by 0.5, which is a half, you get 18. For the next one, I'm just gonna, um, go t over here to the other side. So you have the um, combined gas law P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. And it says t solve for T1. So if we have P1 times V1 over T1 is equal to P2 times V2 over T2, or, or sorry, T2, we're trying to isolate T1. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply this on this side. So, um, and then we would multiply this on this side. So we would end up with P1 times V1. So hopefully you can see that P1 times V1 times T2 is equal to P2 times V2 times T1. So now to isolate T1, we have to divide this side by P2 V2, this side by P2 V2. And when we do that, we get the T1, right? Because all of this cancels out. T1 is equal to P1 times V1 times T2 divided by P2 times V2. All right, so that's the solution here for that one. So this one, again, uh, you wanna look at that solution that I posted or that I just gave you. Um, for this one here, three X minus nine, uh, 3x minus 9 is equal to negative 27. So you're right, you would add 9 to both sides. So that would give you 3x is equal to negative 18. Divide by 3, uh, negative 18 divided by 3 gives you negative 6. So that seems reasonable. If we take 3 times negative 6 and then we subtract 9, it gives us negative 27. So this one would be correct. All right, so with the conversion factors for temperature here, so the first one, we have 2,800 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, and we're trying to convert that into Celsius. So we're gonna use this formula here, and we're gonna say 2,800 subtract 32, and then we're gonna divide all that by 1.8. So if we take 2,800, we subtract 32, we divide all that by 1.8, we end up with uh, the answer that you have. The sig figs are a little bit, um, I guess there's an issue with the sig figs. Anyhow, we can talk about that later in class, but the answer is generally correct. 
For the next one, uh, if we have 93.2 degrees Celsius, um, so below Celsius of so negative 93.2, what's the temperature in Fahrenheit? We're going to use um, a rearranged form of this. So we're going to use this formula here. So we're going to plug in um, 1.8 times negative 93.2, put all that in brackets, and then we're going to add 32 to that. So if we take our calculator, we get 1.8 times negative 93.2, and then we add 32 to that, and that gives us negative 135, so that looks reasonable. And then for the last one, I think that looks reasonable as well. So you definitely want to work on your algebra, okay? Definitely need to concentrate on algebra um, moving forward. So if you're wondering, you know, where would I go to find additional practice problems? So I would go into chapter one, okay, in the textbook, in the Denniston textbook, and go at the end of the textbook where it says problems and questions, okay? And at the back of the book, or in the appendix online, you have the solution to all the odd numbered questions. So I would start there and I would do question one, which is an odd number, all the way to the end. So that is what I would do to get some more practice because you have the answers to all of those problems.